Hello class 8. So how are you enjoying studying at home? It's a new way of learning, you know, you should be open to anything new. Now I'm also trying to do my best and uh, be more very elaborate in my explanation so that uh, even if you're not physically present in front of me, it doesn't make any difference to you in understanding the topics. So today we are going to start chapter 2 that is reproduction in plants. Okay. So to understand that first thing, I would like to show you a nice red rose. So tell me now how many of you like red roses, especially when it's there in a half bloom stage. Isn't it? How many of you? Most of us like such kind of roses which is sweet smell and a nice bright red color. But suppose there are no red roses at all in this whole world, not even in a garden or any anywhere. There are no just no red roses. So how will you feel? So we'll feel a little empty, isn't it? We'll feel Although there will be so many different types of flowers and plants. But when red roses are not there, then you feel that gap in beauty. So now to see these red roses forever, what a plant needs is reproduction. So the process of reproduction is very, very important for any living being. Why? Because it helps it to produce. It's a process by which they produce new organisms of the same kind or species. So it helps it to multiply from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8. Okay. And it, the most basic thing is it helps it to maintain continuity of life. So as because the red roses have been reproducing and therefore we've got new red roses and it will continue. Don't worry, there will be red roses for all of us forever. Now that we know reproduction is a very important process, we need to know how this occurs. So there are two ways or two modes of reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction. What is the difference now? In asexual reproduction, only one parent is required. Okay? In sexual reproduction, male and female, that is, two parents are required. Okay, next, there is no fusion of gametes. Now, what are gametes? These are special sex cells produced by male reproductive system or the female reproductive system. Those special sex cells are called gametes which have the power to produce, fuse and produce a new living being. So in asexual reproduction there is no such requirement of such cells. Okay. But in sexual reproduction it is very very essential fusion of gametes. Okay, so here in sexual reproduction, what you see? Male and female gametes fuse. So as because it is not occurring through fusion of gametes. So there are various ways in which asexual reproduction occurs in especially lower plants or lower animals. So you see, we see asexual reproduction in bacteria, fungus, Okay, in the lower organisms and sexual organisms, the mammals, okay, cat, dog, 
human being okay uh, is seen uh, in these uh, higher organisms so now we will study about the different types of asexual reproduction so the asexual reproduction that is found in dual organisms that can be in many ways so starting with number one that is binary fission binary means two fission means splitting so what happens the parent cell it divides into two identical daughter cells producing two new individuals therefore reproducing for example in bacteria okay what happens a cell the nuclear material is there the nuclear material first increases then the nuclear material divides into two parts then the other cellular material also divides forming two daughter cells okay these are the daughter cells so what did we see that the parent cell divided or split it into two daughter cells therefore it is called binary fission so in some cases there are chlorella or uh, chlamydomonas so what is seen the one parent cell can divide it into four daughter cells too then it is called multiple fission because it is producing more than two organisms next mode of asexual reproduction is budding so in budding what happens the daughter organism arises on the parent cell as an outgrowth the bud like outgrowth the bud grows and then detaches from the parent cell and lives as a new individual okay sometimes it is seen that there may be long chains of buds growing on the parent cell that is the bud outgrowth that was that grew first on top of it there may be many outgrowths growing one after the other like a chain okay then which happens you normally see in the yeast cell so this is a typical yeast cell having uh, the vacuole and nucleus in it in it bordered by the cell wall and then it had some food in it glycogen or some fat vacuoles okay now this is cell what happens the nucleus divides into two and forms the outgrowth or the bud like structure that is the daughter cell okay this bud or this outgrowth detaches from the parent cell and then becomes a new yeast cell so this process is called budding now in yeast cell what is seen that there may be long chains of buds that is even before the bud gets detached another bud might grow on it 
Now, why, where do you see yeast? Yeast is normally used in the bakeries you know, to make bread. So, this uh, it is easily available. And if we take some water, add a little sugar and yeast to it, dissolve it and keep it for some time. And then if you take a drop of that in a, on a slide and observe it under the microscope, you will be able to see a, a yeast cell very easily. Okay. about third type of mode of asexual reproduction that is fragmentation so fragments what is the meaning of fragments pieces small pieces so you can remember by this clue word what happens so here we take the what happens the there are some organisms lower organisms which has the capability of producing new individuals from the fragments or its pieces uh, of the organism so the parent cell might break into pieces due to various reasons now those pieces have the capability to grow to become a new individual so this process by which reproduction occurs is called fragmentation now here we can see the example of spirovira it is a green algae okay and some of the mosses or liverworts can also show this process of fragmentation. So here we will talk about spirovara. Spirovara is a green algae having chlorophyll in it and it is a ribbon like or filamentous in structure. Can you see like a ribbon? Okay. So here what happens by any uh, reason, maybe the current, water current, because if you keep the organism gets broken into two pieces, what will happen? Now this will again grow into a new individual this broken piece and this other broken piece will grow into a new individual so we have the two daughter cells produced from fragments Now the next type of asexual reproduction is spore formation. Now this is actually a protective way of, of the lower organisms to save themselves from becoming, you know, not reproducing due to unfavorable conditions. So in unfavorable conditions, this is the process by which the organisms 
the lower organisms multiply so the best example of it is the if you keep a bread outside um, in this heat now it will be very easy to uh, do this experiment after a few days what you will see you will see blue and black spots on it now if that blue and black spots can be seen okay under the microscope then you will see there will be rounded heads that is sporangium or the spore sac so what happens these spore sacs they burst and when they burst what happens the tiny spores are liberated now these spores keep you know, glowing in the air and when they reach or when conditions are favorable they give rise to new individuals so what are spores Okay, so we need to know what are, they are thick walled, tiny, resistant, asexual, reproductive, Bodies. Okay, so these, uh, this is the way that they reproduce so the bread mold, which is also known as rhizopus. Now you can do this at home. You can see at least the black blue spots that immediately come after a day or two on the bread. Okay, and this is uh, in this way the by the spore formation, the more uh, the ferns or the mosses also reproduce by producing spores. Okay.